I just realized that I don't know how I'm going to edit this video at all, but um, this is how I put everything together. Again, um, this might be some voiceover stuff, it might not, I don't know. Uh, also, this framing is ridiculous, why is it just my head? Who knows? <sighs> okay. Hi! Um, I am filming this on my phone, so I don't know how good the quality is going to be. Probably not great, I imagine, but um, I don't think I have too much to say on here. Um, I'll probably just be doing voiceovers of the whole process, and I might film a little conclusion. But um, basically, this is just a video to talk about um, the zine. Um, so this zine is a little sort of practice for my major body of work for next year. Um, and so what it is, is it is an exploration and a homage, is that the word? I don't know. It's me paying my respect to the um, women in bands in the pop punk scene. The list for this, for you know, who was going to be on this, started it out very long. Well, the list actually started out being pretty long, um, but slowly I ended up having to pick people out <clears throat> based on, you know, what fit the best together and who had inspired me the most, because I didn't ha really have um, a really long period of time to do this, so it was just picking out the 11, like, most sort of inspirational ones to me personally, and then um, figuring out how to place them together and what materials to use and all that. Because, um, which, you know, I'm gonna get into is what each sort of thing within the zine means. So, basically, planning for the zine took a while because, you know, I wanted it to be something that was sort of easy to understand, but also something that had the same, like, aesthetics and the same vibes as, you know, pop punk content. I didn't want to do something that was like, that fit a different scene, if that makes sense. Like I wanted to do something that really fit what pop punk is. Um, and so I've always been fascinated with um, zines and what they look like and what they contain. So I wanted to do something like that for mine, especially since, again, I uh, the topic that I was exploring fit it really well. Once I decided that, we've got these huge pages of spreads and ideas and this is what it looked like on my InDesign and that's what that felt like. Um, Cause yeah, to make the zine I did use InDesign. So um, going into what the zine has. So this is the cover. This is the back cover. They are two collages. Um, of the people that are within the zine. The title is What's It Like Being a Girl in a Band? Which, if you know, <laughs> you know. Um, that is everybody's favorite question for women in pop punk. Why? I don't know, but it is. So, firstly, what I've got is this sort of um, contents page and an introduction page. Actually, if you look at this, there's a quote in here by Hannah Greenwood from a story that she shared maybe two or three years ago. Um, and so she was kind of what inspired this piece. Um, and so I wanted to have a page for her, but I couldn't find enough content on her. So I ended up just, you know, adding that little bit there at the bottom to ensure that she still got, you know, mentioned, sort of put in in some way. Um, so if we go into the actual zine, uh, so basically this is what they all look like. This is what every single page looks like. And so I'll get into what everything is in a second. Um, but then lastly, I've also got this sort of page with autographs. Um, a couple of them actually are autographs that my friends sent me or that other fans sent me from whenever they met whoever it was. And um, so basically what I did with those was I just cleared up the images that they were sent from and um, edited them so that they were a bright sort of black so they look like marker. I just edited them on, so yeah. 
So basically what the content of the, each page is, is uh, like I said, we've got all of the comments from people and quotes and um, the woman and then an article. I just realized that I didn't really talk about um, really in depth about what the idea was. So the idea was basically exploring how women in pop punk get treated and how they are sort of visualized by the audience. Um, and so I did that by doing, you know, gathering all of these very real YouTube comments from people, um, taking screenshots, cropping them, editing them, and then, um, you know, fitting them onto the screen, you know, changing the sizes, changing what I wanted where. Um, also, yeah, one thing that's very interesting actually is how every single page except for this one and obviously this one say that the bands sound like Paramore. All of them, every single one of them. Um, and so, interestingly enough, that links with, I think, there's there's a video that Ariel Bloomer made um, about, you know, I think it's called The Paramore Problem. And so it's basically this idea that every single woman in a band in this scene is compared to Paramore because Paramore was like, I think it was one of the first and one of the biggest sort of female fronted bands um, of the scene at the time. And so now it's just kind of the label that sticks. I don't know, it's kind of interesting. And I knew that that was a thing, but I hadn't actually realized how much of a thing it was until I actually did all of this research and found that every single one of these bands as at least one person thinking they sound like Paramore, even when they are completely different. Moving on from that little rant though, um, what I did was again, so I've got the comments. I picked up an article here, which as you can see, this was kind of like an idea from the start. Like from the start, I had this sort of tweets article and then quotes or something. Like I kind of followed this uh, outline that I had had from the start. The only thing it changed a little was the cover and the back cover because I had a few different ideas for that but I didn't really do anything concrete until I decided on doing a good collage, a sweet little collage. Um, which is actually really ironic because at the start of working on this project I said I didn't want to do collages because um, it just didn't seem like it had enough depth for me. And then I ended up doing literally all sorts of collages throughout. So jokes on me, uh, quite ironic, but okay. Um, so the other thing that stands out here that I would like to mention is the use of material. So every single page has different material used uh, for the drawing. So the drawings all use different techniques and different materials. And some of them have a reason, like for example, um, the doll skin one here. This one is marker because the first time I ever drew the band, I think it was 2017, first time I ever drew them, I drew them in marker. So I thought I'm just gonna do that again. It'll be a little bit symbolic, a little bit not symbolic. It'll look nice. It depends, you know. I did them all like that, sort of like personality based, like, Lurge and Grace and Ink. That's quite, you know, it works. Um, the other thing that I had was, so the articles are all stuff that I feel like make you really realize the position that they're in as, you know, women in bands. And then the lyrics sort of encapsulate that as well. Cause yeah, so I picked lyrics from their own songs that sort of told that story of, you know, what is it like to be a woman in a band as, as best as I could. I think um, there's a couple of them where I could have picked something better, but overall I think I did okay. Now we get to the part of the video where I tell you about how I actually put everything together. So to put everything together, I had a really huge list, which I will be showing you. I had this huge, huge, huge list of what I needed from who and if it was completed or not. So the list was made up of uh, hate comments, headlines, signatures, drawings, and then the lyric or quote that I wanted from each of them. 
So, <laughs> I had, um, basically for each one of these things, I had 11 folders set up on my computer to gather everything as organized as possible because I knew that if I didn't do that, it was going to be a mess and I can't deal with a mess in this type of a project, especially when there's that many things in it. So, um, the first thing that I did was gather all of the comments, which took hours. It took days. I never in my life want to see a YouTube comment ever again. Um, even though they were, they were really funny. I like reading hate comments. They're hilarious. Um, but then, so after that, I would put all of the comments into a folder. Then I would gather three or four headlines and pick the best one. Uh, and then I would take to Twitter, ask everyone on Twitter if they could help me find signatures. A few people sent me their own signatures that they had from, you know, signed albums or from meeting the people or tattoos, whatever. And then after that, if I didn't find that, I would go online and see if I could Google it and find one. After that, I would um, do all of the drawings, which for the drawings, and I have this little uh, chess page. So for example, I had here the different materials that I could use and who they would link best with. There was a few that I switched around a bit, like there was Bonnie and Becky had to be switched around a couple times. And then here I would do tests for stuff that I hadn't done before or that I wasn't sure about. Like for example, coloring with highlighters. That was a bit new for me. Um, doing this with the uh, pen. So sort of leaving things unfinished and trying to make it look like it was made of thread, that sort of thing. Which I think looked cool in the end, but you'll see that later when you go to the description and click the link to see the zine digitally. And so once I'd gathered all of those things, which sometimes I would wait until I gathered all of them to start, but most times I would just gather all the comments and then build and then put all the stuff on top once it was done. So usually, so what I originally wanted to do was I wanted to print out the entire booklet with just the comments, without the drawings and without this text. And then I wanted to glue it on and then like copy them and reproduce them and all that. But I ended up doing everything digitally except for the actual drawings. So to take you through that, um, what I would do would be I would get all of my comments and I would be as organized as possible um, and put everything onto my InDesign project. Um, I will probably do a video talking about how to make small zines later. This is more specifically about this one, but I will probably make a video on how I make zines later so you'll get a deeper look at how I use InDesign um, later. I don't know when later is, but subscribe to find out if you're interested. Um, but yeah, so basically I would just put every single comment on, organize them, resize them, reshape them, move them around how they fit until I had covered as much of the page as possible. There was a couple times where Maybe I needed one more or two more in the middle, but then I just, you know, put the woman on top so that you couldn't really see because it wasn't really going to affect the whole thing. But basically just covering the whole page, um, my article would be the first thing that would go on top. And I had already sort of set up this pink border. So what you would get, so what you would start with would be a black like page, this pink bar, and then once I put the article, the article on top. So what I would finish with, what I was hoping to finish first, was an entire booklet that already had, you know, the outline, so the headline, and then all of the comments in whatever order I thought would work best with all the right sizes and everything, and then this pink bar at the bottom, which again, when I put the footage in, you'll be able to see it straight up. So after that, what I did was I, so I did that for every single page. And then after that, what I did was um, I had to do a lot of research into, you know, 
lyrics that worked, um, what songs could work, how they could like be put in, like how could I put them in in a way where they sort of stood out from the page that they were in, if that makes sense. So like for example, putting these in that way rather than laying them down this way or down here putting these as like steps. So what I did was I opened up a Google Docs document. I picked the font that I like the best and I picked Roboto, I think. Yeah. Um, and so that's sort of the text that I used for all of the white font stuff. I used that font uh, just to add this sort of like typewriter type of look so that it could look a little bit more handmade. And so what I did was I made this document since I wanted to do it physically, I originally printed them out, but then when I ended up having to do it all digitally, I screenshotted every sort of little section. So I screenshotted each one of these and then I put them in wherever they had to go, reorganized them, moved them around, made sure everything was good. Um, but I did that, I did that last. I did that last, but I wanted to get through that one before telling you about the actual illustrations because those took the most time, I think. Um, no, they didn't. No, they definitely didn't. But um, there's more to say about those, I think. So basically, I wanted to use this zine as an opportunity to try out as many materials as I could, especially as many materials that I hadn't tried out as like before as I could um, because this was sort of going to be the last time that I got to mess around with materials. So what I did was I made a list like I showed you already of all the stuff that all the materials that I could implement and who they could work the best with. There was a few that I had to do more than once because for example um, this page I did, so this is Jenna McDougall, and so the first one that I did, I did in acrylics, and it didn't, it just didn't give off the right vibe to me. So what I ended up doing was I made it in pencil. Actually, wait, I think I have it. Yeah, so here it is. So the original design here was this one, but it just wasn't giving me the right vibe for her, so I ended up doing it in pencil. And that works pretty well. And I think that that looks a lot more like Jenna McDougal than the other ones do, than the other one does. So basically, it was this whole sort of trying to figure out what material would fit them best based on their personality and also based on sort of their music as well. So I did that. I did that list in about, I think it took me a whole day to end up being like, yeah, okay, this is it 100%. This is the list. And then I pretty much just took to getting to work. I sketched uh, a lot of them uh, on the same day-ish, and then I ended up um, coloring them all in. And while I sketched and stuff, that was when I sort of realized what I actually wanted to, like, what materials I actually wanted to use on each thing. So I came up with a list, but then once I actually got to work, I'd be like, mm, this one maybe shouldn't be this material. Maybe this should be something else. So for example, making um, Bonnie out of, making Bonnie out of this oil pastel rather than a pen when I had originally planned this pen and then making Haley Williams sit in this exact same pose here. Let me, let me show you, let me show you. So having Haley Williams sit in this exact same pose, just because I felt like she fit better, better for that character, um, that sort of character vibe than Bonnie did. Um, and then on top of that, actually, it was kind of adding that personality that each of them has to each of those drawings. So as you'll see in the footage that I will hopefully edit in, you've got, um, you know, Laura Jane Grace in this sort of ink, like bold ink black color uh, with the quote, gender is not over. And then you've got, you know, 
this really bright, colorful Haley Williams with all the different Haley's coming out of her head. You've got, you know, the, again, J the Jenna McDougal, like the pencil sketch. And I really like doing the um, Ling Gun one. I think that one was really fun because I never worked with glitter, like that sort of glitter pen before for arts. And um, I wanted to do something that sort of gave her this like ghostly um, golden sort of vibe. So I used references from the What's Wrong music video. And then I used those sort of glittery pens for that. And uh, one thing that I've never used was there was, for the Lydia Knight sketch, I used these poster paints and they looked really good and they didn't affect the pencil at all. So I didn't even ink her drawing. I just used pencil for that, which I thought I was going to have to ink it, but I didn't. So I'm very happy with that. And I really like the results and how bright the colors actually came out. Um, so lastly, I wanted to do a little reflection bit on this. So yeah, here's that. Like I said, one of the things that I actually found out through this is how we still compare women in bands to Paramore. Like that still hasn't finished. We still do that. Um, I have here my list of like notes and reflection and all that. So I'll read that to you. So explanations and notes. Using different mediums to represent the different women uh, is a representation of fan art. I forgot to mention that, actually. So, um, yeah, so some of them have specific meanings, some of them don't, but yeah, so all of the, the main idea of doing these drawings, and especially doing them in a different medium, which I can't believe I forgot to say when that's the whole point, is that they all represent fan art. So every single one of them is made in a different style, in a different way, with a different material, because it's meant to represent the fan art people make of these women. Um, again, that also links with the idea that I did the doll skin one in marker when my first drawing of them was in marker. That links to that as well. So every page has at least one, one comparison to Paramore, except for the Paramore page and the Laura Jane Grace page because people compare um, the same genre and the same female singer to Paramore due to their fame and place in the scene, even if the other bands are very different. Um, again, I covered that before. So again, The Paramore Problem by Ariel Bloomer. Uh, I will probably, I'll link that video below actually, because it's, it's, it's quite good and it really links with this project, I think. So that's quite cool to watch. Um, again, so a couple of the signatures were from fans, others I had to Google. Um, this is actually quite, I think this is quite surprising, is that one of my favorite mediums to use through this was the highlighters. I'd never used highlighters before and I was a little bit scared to use highlighters for like a proper like piece of art, but like they look really good, I think. This is actually the proper result. So, um, yeah, and you know what, actually, when you look at this drawing and then you look at the page on the zine, I don't think the zine actually fully, yeah, it doesn't really fully capture how good the highlighters were. So actually, I didn't mention it, but basically how I put the sketches, so I have all the sketches here, but how I actually managed to put them onto the zine was I had to scan every single one of them and then put them in, reshape them, do whatever I had to, to make sure that they fit their page, um, you know, move them around. There was a couple, there was one that I wanted to duplicate. So I wanted to have, I wanted to have this one go through the page three times, but that was going to cover too many of the comments and it was going to change the view of it. So I decided not to, but yeah. So because I ended up doing everything digitally, I didn't, actually use them so they're stuck in my uh, process diary but yeah it actually I think it worked a lot better scanning them and then putting them in however it does take away you know the amount of detail that I think this actually has that I didn't think it would have because it's just highlighters you know anyway so my favorites were the highlighters, um, digital. I actually enjoyed doing digital. I don't think I'm that good at it yet, but I do enjoy 
working on digital. That digital sketch of Haley Williams took me five straight hours. So I do think it looks really good though, but five hours. Uh, the watercolor, which has sort of always been my kind of main thing. I do a lot of color pencil stuff, but I don't know. Watercolors are just 5e for me. Um, so the fine liner pens were cool to work with as well, and the poster paints were cool to work with. Those two were the newest materials. Like, I'd used them before- well, I hadn't used poster paints at all, but I had used fine liner pens before, but just not for proper coloring or proper art, so that was quite cool as well. Um, putting in all the messages was the hardest part. I'm proud of it overall. I'll get to that in a second. I already said the thing about, so the question is based on, the like title is based on the question that they get in every single one of their interviews and that is it. So yeah, I'm quite proud of it overall. I think I did a really good job. There's a couple things that maybe I would have fixed. Um, I definitely need to organize my time a little bit more because I sort of took for granted how much time I had at the start and then I uh, gave myself too little to finish putting it together. So there was like six pages that I had to do in three days because I hadn't realized how short of a period of time I actually had left to do this. Um, but yeah, so my reflection basically says the same. Yeah, so um, my zine helped me explore something that I really care about and it let me have a more in-depth look at women in bands uh, that I admire. One thing I would change is probably being a little bit more organized with time. It took me a long time to gather all the messages and put them together and very little to do all of the art. Uh, the whole thing took a lot longer than I actually expected. Like I thought, I originally thought I was gonna have time to do a few more pages. Like I didn't want to do 11, I wanted to do a few more, but it actually, I ran out of time. So, um, like for example, one of the pages that I wanted to do was, like I said, I wanted to do Hannah Greenwood from Creeper, but I ended up not having enough time to go really, really in depth to see if I could find hate comments because at first glance I couldn't really find anything. So I ended up giving up on that and just because they are a smaller band, so obviously there wasn't that much stuff on them. Um, but yeah, so I ended up just putting in the little note at the start, because she is, after all, what inspired the zine overall. So, I really liked getting to explore different materials to do each of the drawings on every page. It allowed me to discover what my preferred materials are, while also letting me test out things that I hadn't used much before. I think it could have been cool to work on each page with the musician they represent, it could have added an extra layer of meaning, but at the same time, I think using my own choice of things like lyrics added my own personality to it. So basically what I mean by that is just one of the things that I sort of found myself wondering a lot while I was putting it together was wondering, you know, what would somebody have put in? So for example, what, would, what lyric would Laura Jane Grace have put in? What lyric would Hayley Williams have put in herself? Like what would they have picked to sort of encapsulate their struggles as musicians, as women in bands, but also just as women in the world. Like what lyric would they have picked and how did it differ from whatever I picked? Um, but picking it myself was also, I think, cool because it sort of showed what I, like what my, what inspires me out of their work, I think. So um, I'm really glad that I managed to come up with an idea I was passionate about from the start and I think that's visible through the work. Um, definitely what, what I'll take with me for next year is time management. I'm really excited to see what I come up with for next year. I don't really think I want to do a zine for my major work, but after all this I definitely wouldn't mind making another one. I liked that this allowed me to explore a more artistic side to zine making rather than simply a design perspective. I'm really proud of how it came out. Um, I think every part of the process was fun in its own way. So to sort of encapsulate that last part, um, I am also a design student, so seeing, you know, a zine to me is more about like the graphic design and how, you know, that works in like a graphic design point of view. 
but getting to actually do something in an art style like with an art eye and with an art perspective was really cool and really different so for example like if you click on the link down below to see the zine you'll also be able to see the other zine that i made before which was inspired by an album where i sort of made like a lyric book um and that was very clearly more about the design perspective like the graphic design choices and the graphic design colors and the font and the all this but this was getting to look at zine making in an artistic way while also using it to carry out a message so it was kind of like a proper zine kind of i don't even i don't know um but yeah it was cool because everything in it everything about it screams pop punk and it screams that sort of like punk backstory if that makes sense like one of the first ideas that i had was doing something like this but with riot girl bands and um but then i also realized that i wanted to talk about something that's like current and that's right now because that's sort of what i take in more like Riot Girl bands are what sort of inspired this as well. Like they, from the start, sort of gave me this idea of doing a zine and doing this and doing that, but it wasn't until I actually decided to do it on bands and people that inspire me right now rather than that inspired me three years ago that I actually ended up deciding on, you know, this is, this is that, this is what matters. And that is what carried this. If, if Did that make any sense? Probably not. Probably not. Probably not. So, what I'm going to leave you with is, sorry this video was so long. Um, I know there was a couple people that wanted me to talk about my use of InDesign, uh, but I ended up quickly realizing that this probably wasn't going to be the video for that, and I'm really sorry, but if you subscribe, I will have a video on how I use InDesign properly uh yeah sorry this video was so long and so chaotic and also uh if you want to see the zine i've made a digital version that you can check out in the link below uh so you can go see this and everything in it uh properly down below please go see it i worked so hard on it please go see it um, if you enjoyed the video, if you like the zine, let me know, uh, please, <laughs> please let me know, um, share this video with your friends, if you found it helpful as well, like if you found it helpful to see me talk about my ideas and ramble on about nothing for however long this video ends up being, uh, let me know, please. And also, if, if you did find it helpful, I'm very glad. I'm very glad because I did not script this and I don't know what I'm saying. So uh, leave a like below. Subscribe if you haven't actually because I am going to do that zine video I said. And also I have a music thing. I have a music thing that I'm planning that I haven't done. So eventually I'm going to go out and film that. And that'll be very cool. Um... Yeah, so go see the go see the zine down below. Uh, and that's it. That's it. This video is literally the last thing I'm going to do for this zine. So I'm so excited to have it done. Uh, yeah. If you want more clarification or like explanations on things, like if maybe you just need like a little tip on InDesign or something like that that you don't think I'll cover, then let me know down below. Uh, and I will answer that. Also, if you have any questions about InDesign, put them in there and then I will get to them when I film the next video uh, because that'll actually be good because it'll give me a topic to talk about and cover rather than having me ramble on about InDesign. Leave questions, please. <laughs> please tell me what you want me to talk about while I talk about InDesign. Um, and yeah, I think that is it. So like it, comment if you want, if you have questions, subscribe if you haven't and you like music and art things. And uh, that's it. Go see the scene. Link is down below. Cool. Have a good day. Um, yeah. Bye.